All right, so quick question. Can we make a blink deck, five color blink work in uh, Historic Brawl? It is one of the most successful archetypes we've had in Commander. Um, so yes, this is using Historic Brawl. So we're using a few non double color cards. We're using these blink cards here. Uh, notable thing since the last video, we finally got a rare wild card. So we got Hour of Promise to try and hit the uh, Field of the Dead World tree combo if we have to cast it. The rest of the deck is basically um, ETB creatures and ways to buy them back uh, with blinking effects. But yeah, so we're going to take this for free quick game, see how it does. I'm going to assume it'll go pretty poorly because. There's not a lot of interaction in this deck. Um, the one thing I noticed while brewing the deck is a lot of like ETB removal spells were not present. Um, in our, I mean, in the um, in the EDH deck in modern, there's a few more things we can do that give us a bit more better values. Um, also. The four player format makes it far more viable because there's potentially bigger threats that can let us set up. The one issue we all have here is since it's one on one, here we go. Yeah. The Phyrexian Hobo. That is an amazing name and I love it. And they're playing Merfolk Tribal. Okay. So we have two lands. We have one ramp spell if we draw another land. We do have Reconstruct History, which is a I think this is a mulligan. This is not great, but it does do something. I think... <sighs> we can't cast anything in this hand, so we mulligan again. And our opponent immediately concedes. We will not count that as game one. I would be really tempted to. I have limited time today to record, so. Well, technically, yeah. <laughs> That's great. The minute I set up for a recording, we uh, end up losing that. It's interesting. I wonder if that. Well, actually, yeah, a lot of Merfolk support came in with Jumpstart and the Historic Horizons. So, yeah, I can imagine there would be enough for that. But yeah, so we're going to go for half an hour slash, oop, Xanderberger, XXL, and playing Alenda, which was one of my, Alenda um, was one of my favorite decks for ages ago. I played, uh, okay, we can only got two lands and nothing we can cast here. So we're going to mulligan down. This is good. Yep. This is free lands into Cultivate, Rolling, Rebirth, Garuda, Fine Broker, buy something back. Let's go with Guildgate. The problem is we only have so many basic lands, so... Acquisitions expert. Uh, I discard that card. Okay. Uh, well, we'll discard Phylaf. Because I don't think we'll get up to casting it anyway. Alright, then we'll play this. Pretty good. We're going to Parents. We are going to need to hit some stuff pretty quickly here. Alright, that's pretty good. So, let's do this. Cultivate. Let's get red and blue, I believe. Red, blue. We'll put the red onto the field. Next turn, we'll drop Jizzit. Jizzit. Do it. We'll drop this guy. Rankle is a problem. Let's go 
Oh, we could just be dead. Is it worth playing Niv? To fish for something here. Alright, uh, we'll discard the fine broker. It's double mana that we don't have currently. Oh, it's gonna be so good if we can get there. Right. Let's play Derizian and the cat. We can take a hit off Prankle here. We just gotta hope he doesn't have removal. Nightmare Shepherd is kind of annoying. On Prankle, I guess. if you force us to sack something here. I think we still just die here though, which is unfortunate. There's two lands. Sacrifice the creature. I gotta discard this. I need to hit a land. Okay, that is a land. And he sacrifices that. So I've got enough lands here. So I can kill Prankle. The problem is he still has... I think I have to do this. One more counter. Fight this. No, I still die here. Yeah. We still die to the prank trigger. So this deck didn't get off the ground here. Basically... A lot of issues we have, I think, with this deck is that we're too high mana. But there's not a lot of two drop ETB creatures that we could use. Potentially, we also might need to add. Yeah, yeah, we got. That's fine. We just gotta clear out our dailies. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think this is gonna be as viable as the. Um, the uh, Niv Mizzet 5 stuff good stuff deck and I know we can't hit many of the other archetypes because there's just not enough support for the colours so one of the biggest things I think we're going to have issues with one thing I noticed with um, playing the 5 colour thing a bit more off camera is a lot of decks are built around the I hope I hit my curve and then ooh we got a Corval this could be interesting. Corval is one of the strongest. Okay, not great. Not great either, but probably. No, we are a mulligan again. We're apparently not allowed green mana. We're going down to five. Oh my lord. Well, we need to draw red mana or we just lose this game. That's nice of your game. I keep two. <laughs> Unreal. Dreadhorde is really good in this deck. Yep. Dry the Asian Grove. They have another land. 
Yeah, we got a bad start, so. Mult of five and didn't hit the lands. Not the greatest go here, but uh, yeah. <laughs> so all in all, this deck is not viable and I would not advise anyone to build it. I would like a game where maybe me and my opponent get off to a good start. Like, yeah, the Elender game we got trounced, but at least we both got to cast some spells. Would have been nicer if I could have got some lower cast spells, I think. I really think that there is a deck here because Urian decks are viable, but one of the main reasons Urian decks are viable is that you can play a lot of low to the ground cheap mana creatures, and I think that's what I'm going to have to do. I'm going to have to start looking at um, lower to cost things. Okay. Uh, this is no good. Yeah, I mean, looking at this, our average is 5 mana across these cards, which is terrible. The opponent just appears to be taking his time. keep this. Based on the logic of what's going on here, we'll just keep it. Play this. Play another land, then we can... Then we can drop in... Yeah, Kane signet for him. Uh, we got some ramp at least. Problem is, without we can catch Knight of Autumn next turn and blow up the signet. That's probably our best bet. Basically, just got to keep him off big mana. Now, if he wants to start using, because I'm pretty sure this is going to be just heavy removal spells and ram to keep, because they're going to want to get to Valky. Tegrid's Lantern. Of course, we're not allowed a land. Uh, of course. Right, we'll give it one more turn for a land. Well, let's be fair. Um, fine. Yeah, I'll discard Reconstruct History because it's not going to do anything. Drawing the card himself. You know, I too will just cycle this. Because I just desperately want to land. There's a land. Okay, 
know what? I'll lose free life. I don't care. There. Okay, yep. Good near next turn, but I really don't want to. I think I'm gonna go uh, Zeph Prismari, just get more value out of there. After all, if he spends his entire turn just casting uh, Tybalt, it's not gonna be the worst. Okay. Yes, I will sacrifice a creature. And then play this land tapped. Play this. Discard a card. What do you know? I have lands to discard. Oh, we'll just hold these back. You know what? We'll send them in. But we don't give a shit about this. Soul Shatter. Sacrifice with the highest permanent. Hmm. Do I care about Galzef? No, I think I can. I'll put this in the graveyard. You know what? Nah. Come on, hit me for eight. I don't care. Then I go bigger and hit you back. And then I win. Fine. So he plays the Ravenger Worm. That's fine with me. We're going to show him the Oh No meme here because we're just going to play Field of the Dead and we're going to Niv. Oh no, I have to discard a card. Oh no. Reload! <laughs> I'm about to get a few more, buddy. Why, look at these cards. How lovely. Might as well just attack with these two. Doesn't matter. We will discard... what will we discard? The Oracle of half Truths. we don't need to worry about that. We do need another um, different type of land though, currently. We will start sacrificing and giving him a life here. Second goat. You can go ahead. Fight a reunion, discards two cards, draws a lot of stuff. Yeah, this guy appears to be sacrifice discard. But if he's gonna trigger Val um Tybalt, he needs nine mana now since he's cast Valky once.
Problem, buddy. Your Valky trigger doesn't work the way you think it does. It doesn't pick the fight. So it's a stadium, okay? Right, yes, just playing more cards. So, what's the way to do this? I should start with the Risen Reef. See if I can trigger something off this. Timbon lit. Interesting. Right, so I can't trigger nothing off this. So we can do this. Let's do the Elusive Painter. Actually, hold on. Let's renegade run. No. What's the most efficient way to do this? Play the land. Then let's the elusive painter. Then let's. Ooh. Wait, if we renegade rally her. We can get back our basic forest, yeah. Then we can trigger the paper treasure. Let's make this really big. Because this gets back our basic forest, which is enough to trigger field of the dead. Now we have enough to block with that. Uh, you know what, we can just go in the air for nine. That'll be enough for now. Oh my word, no, I have to discard a card. Oh no. I have to discard a fine break mage, no. Alright, they need to board wipe here. That's a worm, it's fine. They had a perfect line. Good game. Oh, I can't GG him. Dang. Again, I do feel like we are suffering from too slow of a deck. We'll get one more in, I think, I have time for before my pre arranging game is. Yep, one more, and we can hopefully clear up these dailies. Yeah. So we are not in the greatest here. We lost to a slow discard Rakdos deck. To be fair, they did pull their bomb with the uh, Massacre Worm, but mm, I don't think this is a viable. Link is viable. I've seen Yorion decks that crush it in this format. Okay, we have a Geatrog. I do love the Geatrog monster. This is a do nothing hand. Again, high mana. We, yeah, I definitely need to lower the curve on this. I think if I do another video on this, I will have to lower the curve. I would also love it if my mana would be way more consistent. Okay, we can keep. Six. Get rid of the time twist because we don't have blue again. I've got to hope that we draw blue. We did not draw blue, but we did draw another ramp spell. An on curve ramp spell, so if we can. Gearrock's a powerhouse in EDH, so I wonder. Okay, well, we're not drawing land, which is always a really fun sign for decks. Right, yeah, our opponent is going to. Uh... Our opponent has had the start that we wish we could have had. Again, no ramp and no blue. Not even a basic land. Well, there's a land way too late. We are probably already dead here. Like, 
not playing anything and having them up to seven or eight mana already is pretty much proper game. We are going to need a pretty decent hand here. Alright, there's white. Okay, so we're going to Hour of Promise. We just gotta grab our usual tricks here. I guess we just gotta pray that this is enough to keep us alive for a little bit. Blast Zone doesn't concern us, honestly, because it doesn't do tokens. Massacre Worm! Oh my god, again! Blown out with another Massacre Worm. Okay, do we have anything here? Alright, a Securitas Route. Let's grab some more gates, because we don't want any more tap lands. Let's play the Tomb Bound Lynch. Then let's discard Oracle of Half Truths. We can pass the turn. And are we now just dead? <laughs> oh yeah! Yeah, we are just dead. That was a really fun game of Magic. We did not even get to play. <laughs> Proof that I think the Blink deck will never work. I would like to try one more deck. I would like to actually just see if we could actually play this deck. Or if we are just going to get it. Because we are close to hitting our uh, daily. So I will suffer one more game. Yes, I think the main issue with Historic Brawl is one-on-one. -on -one. Like, you can't, like, dirtle at all and play anything, like, casually fun. Um, maybe if they split it out and had, like, a rank queue and a... Uh, a casual queue, you could probably like do some janky things there with some of the unknown legends. Oh man, now we get a Cranko. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be a. Oh, that's gonna be a fun experience. <laughs> Alright, you know what? We're gonna keep this, which is terrible, but at least we got some semblance of ramp card draw and other stuff. We're just gonna try it. So, ideally, what we're going to want to do here is Guild Gate here. Yeah. So, I mean, if they have, like, a, a crazy start, I mean... Okay. Uh, he's got a perpetual creature with haste, which I'm pretty sure probably means that... He didn't give it to that. Not the worst. Tapped. We would like the glow shaman to hit a land, please. That's all right. I will put the basic blue land on top of my deck. I will block. Bottling out burst makes more zombies. Alright, so let's inclusive painter into risen room. Yes, let's put that into play. Alright, so he's got Crankle. He's not going to attack here because he's going to want to go wide with more board state. Um, I need to Cloud Blazer here. Draw some cards. Not having something in the form of a board wipe is definitely killing me here. Not even having reflector mage effects is also gonna probably kill me. 
I can't believe I didn't draw land. Paging Goblin, Battlecry Goblin. I've got to take two here and just get the number of goblins down. Down to 20. Um, what's the best way to do this? Is it Niv? Or is it this to get more creatures? Or it could Yurian. Alright. So, we'll just go in first. And we're gonna Yurian. I mean, we get Rockle stopped if he finds any kind of synergy with her. Uh, Not great, not great, not great. Oracle half truths can go away. I really needed a land there. No point. This is uh, this one's already over. So yeah, that is the cancerous world of trying to play a casual deck in a, in a, um, historic brawl. You get an early quit, ruffle stomps, and basically CDH light decks. But we got all our dailies cleared, so we don't have to deal with this anymore. Yeah, that's my end conclusion. If you are going to run any kind of Historic Brawl deck, it better be the optimized version of that deck. There is no room for experimentation or casual fun. So, yep. Sadly, I don't think I'll be playing much Historic Brawl then. If I can't really brew around it, then I think I'll be going down. It might literally just be the thing I play to casually grind out a match and then leave. In fact, it might not even be that because honestly, those matches were so quick I didn't even get to play. Hmm, it's going to be interesting going forward. I'll review the deck and see if I can tune it up to work a bit better, but yeah, not feeling it anymore. So I went through and rebuilt the deck from the ground up. We're going to try one match here. We basically cut off, basically now the most expensive drop in our deck is Urion and um, Power of Thing. We also added a ton of Sagas just for the potential of linking them with a Yurion effect. Plus, some of them have relevant abilities. We're just gonna see how this runs. Um, I will then give the, uh, the Bink a good go. All right, so yes, he's going to play this tapped. So I think next turn I can actually burn a tree into Fall of the Imposter. Alright. Okay, hold on. Burning tree will add red and green. And then I can play this. Put that on here. Alright, so here's Heliot, but not Heliot online. Put another one on down here. We play this tapped and we'll drop the Bloodline Massacre. Which will make us a future and we'll attack. It's definitely more impactful having a lower mana curve. I need. To... Ooh! Gains life. Puts a 1 1 counter on that. Very good. Alright. Misplayed that though because now I get to exile. 
Yeah, he exiles that. Alright. So we can't do both, so let's... Let's start with the Risen Reef. This is definitely probably the best combo here. That gets us a white blink effect. Alright, so we'll play this untapped. Go to combat and we'll attack. Because the berserk triggers which shorts us a card. We will then actually do we do we No, we're not too bummed about that. Blink in a Risen Reef to gain more value here would definitely be worth it. Put him down to 20. Smothering Tide, that's fine. Smothering Tide's not as busted here. I actually want a Risen Reef in there. See if I can hit anything good. We got another blink card, which is always good. Uh, we will decline. Oh, we gain a red. So what we'll do here? We'll out of promise. And we'll hit our lovely combo. The game knows. We'll put it together. Shield of the Dead and Risen Reef. Then we'll play this untap for two life. This is another land. And we'll play the Invasion of the Giants. Which will then spy two. Two lands on top. We have a land drop for next turn, so let's. Let's put the land on top. Alright. Let's get in with the uh, Berserker. Divine Visitation. Now I have to pay for these, because otherwise it's going to be... Oh, it's creature tokens. Right, my bad. I didn't realize it's creature tokens does that. Alright, so we'll live here. Reload! Let's see what our Niv can pick up. Those are the cards. All relatively low. So we will play... We could play a cloak. Alright, we'll play that. And then we'll go to combat. We'll attack with everything. I'm more than happy to lose a zombie. Righteous Valkyrie. Nice. We'll gain a life. You put a 1 1 counter on the Valkyrie. Okay. Right, in your end step. We are going to blink Niv, find some more cards. Reload! It's, uh, not a great hit, but there's enough here to keep us going. Yeah, he thinks so. so. yeah, so to summarize and add this on top of the previous video, it is probably possible to play a more casual deck but you definitely have to have a lower mana curve and have answers. I got too excited trying to build a high CMC uh, deck, but yeah, we'll leave it at that.